Hello everybody, my name is Ilya Rashvic, I'm a lecturer at the University of Birmingham and today I'm going to be talking to you about a fascinating element in the periodic table, it's carbon. Carbon is an element that can be found in all sorts of materials across the world and in our day-to-day -day lives. Um, just as an example, this, this background on this introductory slide is a representation of carbon fibre, a very light a very strong material which is used in all sorts of things from high-end race cars to um, aeroplanes. But carbon appears in other parts of our lives, basically every part of our life. It's easier to list things that aren't made of carbon than those that are. For example, you might have a Coke can in your fridge that's made of, out of aluminium. Um, but here we can also see other examples, all the food that you eat, all of the plastics that you use in your day-to-day -day life, fossil fuels, the, the very molecules and building blocks of life, the things that make you you, they are all made of carbon. And that's because carbon is an element with a, a kind of Goldilocks reactivity. It's not so reactive that it instantly reacts with everything. And likewise, neither is it too inert so that it just sits there doing nothing. And because of that, we've managed to get all of this rich variety of life and other structures on our planet. And indeed, it's because carbon can bond into different structures that makes it so interesting. All right, why am I going to talk about alligators? I'm not, but this is quite a nice way to remember a very useful word in science. And that is allotropes, allotropes. So this is allo rather than ali, but uh, allotropes are different structural forms of the same element. And carbon is unique in having an absolutely huge range of dif different structural forms. Um, and we're going to cover uh, just basically a few of those, this kind of menagerie of um, this zoo, if you like, of carbon structures um, to sh hopefully show you how exciting this actually is. So there are two which you are probably familiar with, uh, maybe not on a day-to-day -day basis, but you definitely know of. The first is diamond. If you're familiar with this on a day-to-day -day basis, then congratulations. But diamond is obviously a very precious um, material here on Earth and very expensive. Um, and it's also the hardest material known to man. And it's all made from carbon. Absolutely fascinatingly, every carbon atom in diamond is bonded to four others in three-dimensional space. And in this tetrahedral um, configuration, it makes the material really, really hard. These covalent bonds mean that the atoms don't move anywhere and you get a really, really hard material. But likewise, there is another form of carbon which doesn't look anything like this lovely, transparent and glistening diamond. And that's graphite. The very lead in your pencils. So it's important to note here that pencil lead is not actually made out of lead. Big trick. So every time you write with your pencil, the lead is actually made out of graphite. And graphite is a very interesting material because it's made out of carbon again. But instead of every carbon atom being bonded to four carbon at other carbon atoms, it's bonded to three others. And it makes these flat sheets, hexagonal sheets, which do not then uh, are not directly bonded with each other. And because of that, those sheets can slide over each other. And that's why you can use um, graphite pencils. And indeed, the name graphite comes via German, I believe, from the ancient Greek uh, for writing. So much like, for example, autograph or biography are to do with writing, graphite is so called because you can write with it. Now, graphite, when you write with it, um, as I said, these layers of uh, graphite um, then rub off onto the, onto the sheet of paper. And those layers of graphite individually are themselves actually very interesting. You may have heard of graphene before. Graphene is a single layer of graphite. So it is only one atom thick. And this is a kind of introduction to a whole new exotic world of materials. This is the nano world. This is a nanomaterial. And this is the first of the carbon nanomaterials that I'm going to introduce to you today. And graphene was actually discovered in 2003 by some scientists with a very simple experiment. They simply got a block of graphite, not unlike a, a large pencil, and it's called the famous scotch tape experiment. They just got some sticky tape, like sellotape, 
and they kept peeling it off a block of graphite and they kept peeling it off 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 until they were left with just one single layer of graphene and graphene is a wonder material which has very interesting for example properties in terms of its electrical conductivity and the fact that it can be mixed in with um, plastics into flexible structures so that we could use it for example in flexible electronics such as screens and solar cells now if you take a graphene sheet and think of rolling it into a tube and then making sure that it joins at the ends, you end up with something called a carbon nanotube. That's not actually how they're made, but it's helpful to think of the structure in that way. As you can see, it's made of these hexagonal um, carbon arrangements again. And these are tubes of a diameter of about 1 to 10 nanometers, roughly speaking, in the, on that order of magnitude. But they extend far longer. And these tubes are fascinating materials. You can put stuff inside, you can attach stuff to the outside. And again, they have, because of their um, electronic properties, they have some very uh, potentially interesting applications in um, electronics. They're also incredibly strong and very strong in that um, longitudinal direction, such that um, people are looking at al alloying them with other materials, for example, uh, aluminium and also carbon fiber to create new, stronger and lighter materials. So that's the second, if you like, um, carbon nanomaterial. And that was discovered in 1991. So we're going back in time. And we'll go back in time once more to 1985. That was when this molecule was discovered. And this is the first, if you like, molecular form of, or if you like, molecular allotrope of carbon, the first molecular carbon nanomaterial. And hopefully you might be shouting at the screen, oh, I know what that is, it's called A. And maybe you shouted out one of these, a Buckminster Fullerene or a Fullerene or a Buckyball or C60. So-called because there are 60 carbon atoms in it. And the fascinating thing with these molecular cages is that they're the exact same shape as a football. And this is no exaggeration. Every vertex on that football corresponds to a carbon atom in the fullerene. Every edge on the football corresponds to a covalent bond between two carbon atoms. And it's remarkable when you think that a football is on the order of tens of centimeters. A buckyball is only one nanometer, one billionth of a meter in diameter. That's seven orders of magnitude smaller and yet it has the exact same structure. I find that fascinating. Now, this material, the buckyball, was discovered by, uh, well, it was first hypothesized to exist by some very interesting people called astrophysicists, which I always think is quite a cool job. And they were looking out into deep space, and they were seeing that there were these exotic carbon molecules being formed, but they couldn't figure out what they were. So they tried to recreate that uh, those conditions on Earth. And that is exactly how we make these materials to this day. This is an example of the kit called Arc Discharge. And in that chamber we basically recreate space we evacuate all the gas out we pump in a bit of helium and then inside there are two effectively giant pencils two thick graphite rods through which we blast a large direct current of electricity and you get this plasma much like lightning across the gap which is why it's called an arc an electric arc discharge and in that very violent and hot process you get these beautiful molecules being formed you can also make um, carbon nanotubes in this way. Um, and I still think that's a lovely way as to how we actually make these materials. So that's all well and good. But those are, if you like, the three standard carbon nanomaterials. But there are far more exotic species as well, which are really quite interesting. The first, it helps to think of Russian dolls in these. And we're going to apply the Russian doll concept to two of our carbon nanomaterials. The first is the fullerenes. What happens if you have a fullerene, a carbon cage, and then you encapsulate it in a bigger carbon cage? And then you might encapsulate that again in a bigger carbon cage again. And this is indeed possible to make, and we do make them. And they have the fast, fantastic name of carbon nano onions because they have this onion-like structure. Now, you can apply the same Russian doll concept to carbon nanotubes as well. And if we look down the length of a carbon nanotube and then we start to grow other nanotubes around them we end up forming what are known as multi-walled carbon nanotubes and these are interesting materials in their own right 
but we can go further. And there are some inspirations, if you like, from nature. So the first one is if you combine a fullerene externally to a carbon nanotube, you end up with a carbon nanobud. And you can tune interesting properties in this way. Likewise, what happens if you put the fullerenes inside the nanotube? You end up with a pea pod. And these indeed have been made and continue to be made. And there are lots of applications, particularly in electronics, that people are interested in looking at these materials for. There's also a whole other range, carbon nano scrolls, nano cones, nano horns, all sorts of weird and wacky shapes. And it's really fun to be able to play with carbon on such a small scale and create these really unique structures. And with these new unique structures, we can envisage applications and technologies which simply aren't available at the moment. So that was a very quick introduction just to, as I say, the, the menagerie, the zoo, of carbon nanomaterials that are out there. Carbon is a fascinating uh, element and one which uh, everybody should take heed of because it surrounds us every single day. Um, my name is Ilya Rashvic. Thank you again for listening to this talk. Um, I hope you really enjoy Virtual Coco Mad and uh, hopefully see you in person next year. Bye-bye.